algebraic expressions today. <coughs> algebra, bless you. What an algebraic expression is, it's just an expression that contains one or more variables. Let's start that over again, Mrs. Brown, because that all, all went right, crazy. I'm done. You're done, okay. <laughs> no, I'm done taking notes. Yeah. That's, no, I, I, we knew that's exactly what you meant. I know. So I start? We're going to start again. Modeling and writing algebraic expressions. A y amount would be cut off, but I don't know how much that is. If I were going to model this one, I start with the value x. I don't know how long it is. I'm just going to draw it a little long, and I'm going to label it as x, and I'm going to add seven pieces to it. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to tell you, I don't like this model too much because the way I draw it might make you think that my answer is three, but that y can change. So this model, I really want to give the idea that it can change. This model would stay the same. Whatever x is, I would just put those pieces on. So let's try another one. I'm going to switch colors. It might be a little bit easier to follow through. So let's try another one. Let's try maybe one that might do some multiplication. So, did anybody have one in the lesson that was difficult for them that they'd like us to do? Okay, so what if we tried the product of 11 and x? Okay, the product of 11 and x. I know that word product means I'm going to be multiplying. I'm going to multiply 11 times x. And so just by doing that, I really want to kind of rewrite that because that x looks like too many x's. I think I might use this time, use that, that dot for the x. I think that's really going to drag it home that it's 11 times x. Another way I could write this is 11x. Remember in math, if we push the two terms together, it really does mean multiply. All three different ways say the same thing. Or parentheses. Or putting a parentheses around both terms or one of the terms would work as well. So there's a lot of different ways of showing the product. Okay. And again, if I wanted to show that a product of 11x, it would be showing x and I would have 11 of them, right? Would be 11 of them. Okay. So the symbols are helping, all right? So let's think about I want to think about another subtraction term. What if I had, what if I had a term, let's go back the other way up here. What if I had t minus two? What would that bar model look like? Well, let's see. It means I would start with a t, some amount t. And what am I doing? I'm really cutting off two pieces. Cut off two pieces, so that's a drawing. How can I put that in words? How can I go the other way? What's one thing I could write here in words? What, what would you say when you read that out loud to me? T minus two or two less than T or Two subtracted from t. So I start with t and I'm going to subtract two from it. All of those expressions can be written with that, with that ex algebraic expression right there. We can try one more with a division. What if I had Something that said the quotient of z and three. Oh, these ones are always hard for me. What makes them difficult? Well, because I'm not sure what I'm 
which one comes first and which one comes second. And I know that they're not commutative. Like I, I know that it's like subtraction. I can't put the, it matters where I place them. So it's different than addition and subtraction where it doesn't matter what's on either side. I'm still going to get the same answer. Here, if I put them in the wrong spot, I'm going to get the wrong answer. Right. So I don't know which one goes first. I have to decide which one goes first. Let's put the stars. So I have to do a little thinking. I know that I have a, I know I'm using the division symbol. And I know Z is on one side, three is on the other. But what is it? The best rule of thumb is what's said first goes first. The quotient of Z and three, Z first, then three. That's the one. Okay, when it's listed this way. I would get in the habit when I'm doing addition, if seven said first, I write it first and then X. Even though I know I could just as equivalent, it's the same to say X plus seven, but I know when I get here or here, it really matters. I'd start to get in the habit of training my brain of what's said first. If it says, if it's listed as the quotient, if it's telling me I'm dividing things into groups, then I have to think what's being, what's being divided and what's the groups. So the first thing is always what's being divided, right? So what am I starting with? What do I start with? And then what's being divided? So you have to be a little bit careful with those. That's what we're doing today. We're taking terms, sometimes taking a term and putting it to words, sometimes taking words and putting it into terms. So that's what we're practicing right now. And it's just going to be one of those things, the more you practice as with everything else, the better you get. What questions do you guys have? Does anybody have any wonderings? What questions could, could you ask or what wonderings might you have? Right. Well, I wonder how I'll be using this in the future, what types of problems I'll be solving, and how much practice it will take for me to get good at this.